Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm starting a new project. Well, I kind of already started it, but uh, I thought I'd start recording uh, the, the progress that I'm making uh, so you guys can follow along. Um, but uh, uh, the plan is I've got three cast iron discs uh, from McMaster Car here. They're about six inches across, about an inch and a quarter thick. Um, and we're going to be turning these into uh, lapping plates using the Whitworth three plate method. Um, if you're not familiar with what that is, basically it's a process of making flat surfaces by taking uh, two surfaces and basically kind of rubbing them together and abrading them. And uh, as you do that, this surface gets a little flatter and this surface gets a little flatter. And over time, they, they just kind of get flatter. Uh, the problem with using just two plates though is you end up, uh, the plates end up in sort of an, an agreement with each other. One plate becomes convex, the other one becomes concave, and they are not flat. So what you have to do is kind of introduce a third plate and do a rotation uh, on the plates to keep them kind of, uh, you know, different angles of contact and, and whatnot. And over time that will make them all flat. Um, so one of the first things I need to do with this is I need to... Uh, Kind of these these sides are really rough here. Uh, this is you know the saw marks from you know uh, from McMaster where they cut the cut the stock. Uh, this is extremely rough. Um, you know maybe like uh, you know four or five thousandths of height variation as far as these. I mean, you can see these ridges on here. Uh, so what we need to do is get rid of those. Uh, we need to sand them down. Uh, normally. Uh, uh, you would stick these in a lathe and just kind of face them off and that'll get them pretty flat. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a lathe. Uh, so I am going to have to resort to the hard way of doing this, which is basically take uh, a plate, put it down on a piece of sandpaper on a flat surface, relatively flat surface, and uh, just kind of grind away at it and, and kind of clean that up. Uh, the A plate, I've actually already done using that process. And you can see that it's... Uh, really flat and shiny you can see the light reflecting in it um, so but what I need to do is do this on these these two plates right here so when I first uh, did this plate I was using 60 grit sandpaper and, and that worked pretty well but it, it, it did take a while for me to kind of grind that down and make it flat I mean, let's just flip it over here so we can look at you um, yeah, so th that took a while. Uh, I'd say I spent maybe like six to eight hours of uh, just taking this and just pushing it back and forth on the sandpaper. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd like that to go a little faster. So uh, I'm going to try some of this. This is some 40 grit sandpaper. It's from 3M. I just got it off of uh, Amazon. Uh, so maybe this will make it go a little faster uh, for the B plate. Uh, if it does, great. I'll probably continue to do that for the C plate. Uh, but, uh, you know, if it doesn't, maybe uh, I'll just stick this in my CNC mill and kind of maybe flatten it off that way and see what that gets me. And then maybe finish it up with sandpaper after that. Uh, but anyway, that's the plan. So, uh, so I'm going to get this kind of uh, set up outside and I'll stick the bleep B plate on there. Um, so originally when I, I started this project, I, I was kind of curious. I wanted to, uh, you know, normally when you, uh, you know, rub these plates against each other, you, you, you kind of have some sort of abrasive in between the plates to do the grinding. Uh, I was kind of curious, like, how far could you get doing this with just grinding the plates together with no abrasive? Because it, technically there is abrasive action there. I mean, you, you, you are kind of grinding one surface against another and it will uh, flatten out. In fact, you can kind of see um, just doing that for... A few hours, uh, it, it did start kind of a, you know, grinding away at the the edge here. It's just kind of the high points. Um, yeah, but I, I quickly determined that was going to take a very very long time. So I decided, uh, yeah, I broke down. I'm like, okay, let's uh, not try to commando this. Um, uh, let's uh, let's use some sandpaper. So got sandpaper, got this one ground down. Now I need to do the other two. Uh, and yeah, so that'll be the next step. So let's, uh, let's get, get to grinding. All 
Hi guys, so I decided to sit up here at my desk, uh, I got a little too late and uh, I didn't want to do this outside, so I just uh, got this set up at my desk here. Uh, this is the uh, 60 grit sandpaper that I was using, I, uh, uh, we're going to get rid of that. So we're going to try this 40 stuff, uh, let me grab a sheet of the 40. And uh, got that there, this is just a piece of... MDF, it's kind of rough. Uh, it's not particularly super flat. The goal isn't to get this, uh, you know, perfectly flat. Just flatten it up a bit so we can start, you know, doing the lapping. Uh, I got some uh, Gorilla Grew spray adhesive here. So we'll spray a little bit of that on there, making sure it sticks down pretty good. Just kind of shield it here. Pop it down. Uh, this usually stays down pretty well while we're uh, grinding stuff. We'll see how the 40 does. It's a little rougher, so might uh, a little more friction. There's the plate. Uh, it's kind of where we're at as far as uh, well, the reflection there. Focus. There we go. Yeah, so it's kind of where we're at as far as the grind. Uh, all right, well, let's get started. We got the V plate here. And uh, yeah, oh, that sounds good. grinding it. Uh, look at a little uh, eye protection. I'm going to feel some grits flying up and hitting me in the face. So I'm just kind of using a back and forth stroke uh, and then just kind of rotating it every now and then, uh, maybe every couple strokes, just rotate it. Uh, just kind of wear it a little bit evenly. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's back and forth. Yeah, it's pretty good progress. Catch the light, right? Yeah, you can see it kind of wearing uh, pretty good. It's definitely going, I think, faster than the, the 60 grit. Uh, th this will go really fast at the start, uh, but as you continue to uh, kind of wear things more evenly, you'll be You'll have more surface contact with the sandpaper and you'll have to remove more material so it'll take longer and longer to make progress as you as you go uh, but in the beginning it goes yeah pretty quick but uh, yeah let's keep going with this So from time to time, we'll uh, clean the swarf off the sandpaper. Let me do a uh... 
I like about the spray adhesive is you can kind of remove this and then uh, put it back down and it'll, it'll stick pretty well again. So I just kind of dump it over here. Back down on there. Show you the progress here. That's actually, uh, yeah, that's that's doing pretty good. I need to figure out the camera here. There we go. So you can see we've uh, done pretty good. Um, and not quite hitting the middle yet, but uh, actually, so what I noticed is when I did the first one, the outsides uh, kind of wore down, uh, kind of like they were the high spot, but. Uh, you know, if I stuck this on like a surface plate and kind of measured the height, it seemed like the, the middle was still kind of high. So, uh, I don't know. I think maybe just it's kind of rocking on the uh, the board and just kind of doing the uh, the outside. You, you tend to put more pressure on the outside, so maybe that's why that gets done first. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can kind of take care of that later on. Just uh, be a little more careful with the sanding and you get a little more flatter. Um, Later on, I did take a small block and just kind of work the middle of this and kind of flatten it out a little bit just to kind of make it uh, somewhat flatter. Uh, but, but the goal right now is just to kind of remove material and just get rid of all these tool marks. And uh, yeah, back to it. Um, as far as the sandpaper goes, as long as you keep getting like uh, this black stuff showing up on here, um, you then you you are continuing to remove material from the the block. It's stuck on there really good now. Yeah, these edges are starting to get sharp. I'm gonna go around and uh, take a file and just put a, a chamfer on there to uh, kind of not get cut with that. 
Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll keep going with this, uh, you know, and uh, check in periodically. I'll do an update as far as uh, what the progress is. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to take probably, you know, five, six hours of, you know, hard grinding to uh, get to the end. But uh, we'll just keep going. All right, guys, so just kind of an update. Uh, I've been going about another uh, 20 minutes or so. And this is uh, kind of where we're at here. Let me get that in focus. You can see that catch it in the light there. So we've got uh, quite a bit of quite a bit of wear over here. Um, kind of starting to move in on the sides. Most of it's on the, the front and the back here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're getting there. So I'm pretty happy with the uh, the 40 grit. I think it's going a lot faster than uh, the 60 grit, which yeah, makes sense, right? 40 grit versus 60. Um, yeah, I think it's probably going maybe like, uh, certainly maybe twice as fast. Um, but we'll see. We'll keep going. Like I said, this starts out really... Uh, Looks like you're making great progress in the beginning, and uh, yeah, it tapers off after that. Um, when you get towards the end, and you just got like a few little scratches still left in the middle here, like oh yeah, you know, five minutes be done, you know. Well, but no, it's like an hour to kind of get those because you have to pretty much grind down everything else. So yeah, yeah, but, uh, not fun. <laughs> uh this this is a good workout though i'll tell you that much uh you will sweat you will be sore um but uh you know no pain no gain right but uh yeah we'll keep going all right so here's where we're at after uh about an hour and a half to two hours of uh contact with the sandpaper grinding um, what, what's been a, a few seconds for you guys has been a few days for me uh, so I didn't uh, do all that at once you know every now and then I'll come over do maybe 10 minutes uh, go take a break uh, come back later do another five ten minutes take a break uh, it, like I said it's a good workout um, you get tired pretty quickly pushing you know, this thing weighs like 10 pounds uh, so you think, you know, with the friction of the sandpaper, it's more like 20. So you're pushing that back and forth, and yeah, that's a good workout. Um, so we'll keep going with it, keep uh, sanding away. Uh, I do think the, the 40 grit's definitely working better than the 60, which uh, makes sense, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll keep going. So next time you uh, see it, we'll probably be at the finish line for this one. Okay, so change of plans. I was going to start grinding on this again, but I remembered something with plate A, and it seemed to come out convex, and that makes sense because I have read in the past that when you're sanding something, generally it comes out convex. You, you put a lot of pressure on mainly the edges, and when you're sanding, the, the edges kind of get ground away first, and kind of leaves the center a little bit high, so you end up with kind of a, a dome shape. Uh, and that's what I, that's what I have here. Uh, so I got the surface plate here. I, I have a dial indicator. I've got it set up. Uh, let's take a look at kind of the low spot in this rough area here. Uh, okay. Actually, let's go out to the edge here. That's zero. That's zero out here. So if I zero out the indicator, yeah, it looks about zero. Kind of hard to tell in the camera. Um, so let's sweep around the edge of this on the outside. So I got a thousandth high there, come over to this side, and yeah, maybe half a thousandth high over there, come over to the front. Oh, maybe half a thousandth low, uh, back to zero. Let me check this again. Yeah, a thousandth high. So that's relatively parallel to the surface plate. Yeah, out a thousandth maybe. Uh, maybe a little more, but if I come to the center area, you can see that I'm like four thousandths, five thousandths high here in the middle. 
and if I kind of come to the edge, you can see I'm still five thousandths, and then right here it starts kind of dropping off, and kind of the same for the back area. I stay high until you know, kind of the the edge. So I've, I've got kind of a dome shape going on. So I could continue sanding it the way I'm sanding it, and you know sand this down here in an effort to try to sand out the middle more but that's just really going to be a lot of wasted effort uh, I've got this high spot in the middle here um, I've got low spots all around what I'm ideally going for is a flat surface so what I think I'm going to do and I did do this with plate A is make a little sanding block and just kind of work the middle of this plate bring down the high in the middle bring it in, you know, level with the, the outsides and spend my time putting work where it needs to go. So I got my little sanding block here. So I've just got the 40 grit sandpaper on there. And I'll just use this to kind of sand down in the middle here and kind of work down that middle area. So we'll smooth this out, bring it down, it'll be more in line. Uh, the plate will be flatter, that'll be happier, um, and then we'll just do the same thing with plate C. And then we should be in a, a good position to start grinding these plates against each other and start working on making, making them as flat as we can get them. Okay, so I'm going to take this over and get this set up at the little sanding station and we'll start working on it again. Alright, so we're back here at my desk. I got a little setup going on. I got my sanding block here with a 40 grit sandpaper attached to it. I'm going to use this to work down the middle here. Uh, just move it around and have a circular motion, some back and forth. We'll rotate the, uh, the plate a little bit and just start working down this middle area. Well, it's, it's getting there. Still got a bit to, uh, bit to sand. But making progress, you can tell it's starting to flatten out there. So, cool, we'll keep going. All right, so let me, uh, <clears throat> bring you up to speed on where I'm at with things. Uh, so, you know, I've got plate A here, plate B, plate C. Uh, all three are what I would consider probably done as far as I'm going to take them. Uh, I, I got B finished and uh, and then I started on C. And I came up with a new way that works a lot better. Um, and uh, let me uh, put up a little video here of uh, what I came up with. So uh, before I was just using kind of one piece of sandpaper on a board and yeah, oh, that works uh, but I thought well all right, it's you know triple your pleasure triple your fun right so uh, I put uh, three sheets um, on a board here with some spray adhesive and uh, 
you know, in the past, uh, what I was running into is I would end up with kind of a high spot in the middle. So I thought, well, yeah, let me kind of put some sandpaper on the edge of a board and maybe I could run it along the edge with the, you know, half of the, the disc hanging off the edge and put more pressure on the middle so that kind of keeps that even. And that works really, really well. Um, and then uh, it removed uh, material much faster than I, I, I thought it would. Um, yeah, certainly a lot faster than the previous methods. I, I think in an hour and a half I'd pretty much done what I had accomplished, you know, the first time on plate A and in, uh, you know, a couple days. So, uh, yeah, definitely a lot faster. Uh, the other thing is you could also kind of work the corner of the sandpaper uh, and, and certainly just definitely, you know, put a lot of pressure towards, you know, the, the angle off that corner and get a lot of you know, pressure on the center of it and kind of work that down. Uh, and then you could also just, you know, use the middle of the sandpaper and, and uh, you know, kind of work things normally uh, like I had been. Uh, but, uh, yeah, doing a combination of those things, it, uh, yeah, it, it uh, progressed through things very, very quickly. Uh, like I said, I think in an hour and a half, I had, I had pretty much got to a point where uh, I was, like, pretty happy with uh, things. Um, there are some tooling marks still left on here. That's okay. Um, you know, part of the, the, the process of grinding these against each other, I, I think that's going to come out. If it doesn't, I'll, I'll come back. I'll hit it with some more sandpaper and, uh, you know, just kind of address it then. But uh, for now, that's what I'm going to go with. Um, so on the, the topic of uh, abrasives and grinding these things out, um, so I, I don't know uh, if you've seen the videos by Tom Lipton over at Ox Tools. He, he has a full series of videos on this whole process and, and kind of goes into things very, very detailed. Uh, it's like a four-part video series. Uh, I definitely encourage you to check it out. It's, um, it, it'll probably answer a lot more questions that you might have than, than what I'm doing here. This is for me just to kind of document my process of how I went through doing this. Uh, you know, I, you know. Tom Lipton has access to a lathe, uh, a, a, among many other pieces of equipment, uh, so he was able to face these off. I don't have a lathe, so I'm using sandpaper, trying that. Maybe uh, maybe I didn't even need the sandpaper. Maybe I could have just started, you know, throwing some 60 grit on here and, and just, you know, working these down. But, uh, you know, I went with sandpaper, yeah, so, um, yeah, seems to be working so far. Uh, but anyway, as far as abrasives here, this is this is something that Tom Lipton used in, in his videos. Uh, this is a, a, a test kit. It's actually got like eight different little cans in here. Uh, there's there's four cans that are green and four cans that are yellow. Uh, the yellow ones are for your softer metals, uh, like your red metals, like uh, copper, bronze, brass, that sort of thing. Uh, the, the green ones are for the, the hard metals, um, cast iron, aluminum, steel. Uh, you know that sort of stuff. So uh, if you open it up here, you can actually take a look uh, inside. You know, you got the four the four yellow cans here. Uh, we're just going to ignore those. Uh, you know, well obviously we got some pretty hard metal here, so we'll be using the green stuff. Uh, this is uh, it says 55 coarse on the side. Uh, if you look it up, it, it it's this is comes out to like 60 grit. Uh, this was, you know, this says 77 on the side, but it's, it's something much higher, and uh, this is 111, uh, and this one, I think, is 333. This is, I, I think, like 320 grid or something. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll, you know, I, I was thinking about starting with this stuff. Uh, in fact, I, I did do a little test on here, and, it, you know, it seems to be working. Um, uh, the thing is, this is all I've got of this, uh, so I don't know how how much of this is going to be required. Uh, I'm going to open it up and kind of get like a shot in there. It's just uh, you can see, it's just uh, not very not very much. This is only like half full, so yeah, I don't think that's going to last very long. Um, so yeah, it's kind of an option, uh, but I, I think what I'm going to go with is. Uh, this right here. Uh, this is a uh, silicon carbide uh, grit. It's this is 60 grit. Uh, I got this from firsthanddiscovery.com. Like it says right there in the bottle. Uh, this is actually part of a telescope mirror grinding kit. Uh, that's another project I'll be working on. Uh, probably as soon as I finish up these lapping plates, I'll be I'll be starting on that. Uh, been wanting to build a telescope for a while, so uh, 
yeah, that uh, should be a fun project. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm just going to open this up, take a look inside. It's just uh, free abrasive. Um, take a look. Uh, you can see the, the grains in there. Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, you know, I'll start with this stuff and see uh, see how well this goes. Uh, anyways, I got I got two pounds of this stuff, and and this stuff is is pretty cheap. I think it's like ten bucks for the whole the whole two pound bottle here, so not too bad. Um, uh, I you know I did uh, you know Tom Lipton uses this for the the green stuff. In fact, like I say, you know, I tried a little of it. Uh, it kind of settles in the in the bottom there. Uh, you can kind of see the the black stuff around the side. That's actual actual grit. Uh, you can see it really well there. Um, I, I I was having a hard time getting it out. I, you know, I just kind of had to flip it and kind of tip it until like you got some of the the black grit down in there, and then just kind of let it eke out onto there. Um, yeah, I, I think for this stuff, uh, I, I'm just gonna like spoon it on, and uh, you know maybe spray it. Um, I, I I don't know that old uh, Tom Lipton used uh, lighter fluid. Uh, as a solvent to, to kind of mix it up. Um, I, I, I may just use water. Water will certainly work, uh, although it may not be uh, like water and cast iron kind of have a love-hate relationship going on. So uh, yeah, I, I, I may uh, may just go back to the lighter fluid and give that a shot. Just, you know, squirt a little on there, dump a little abrasive on, and then, uh, you know, just kind of grind the place together. Uh, so yeah, let's get uh, set up for that, and uh, yeah, kind of excited to get grinding on these things and uh, start start getting these things flat. All right, so I think we got our setup here. Um, so I got uh, plate B on the bottom here, and there's B, and I got my plate A right here. There's A. And uh, like, uh, yeah, start with a little abrasive on there, a little 60 grit silicon carbide. Just get like a little, maybe a little quarter teaspoon here. Let's start with that. And uh, I'm going to start with the lighter fluid here. We'll just kind of uh, squirt a little on there. Yeah. Maybe smear it around a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, it uh, it uh, says it's odorless, but uh, I smell an odor. Um, one other thing I should point out: Tom Lipton actually cut grooves in his uh, to kind of let the the abrasive kind of get down in there and kind of have a place to go and all that. Um, I I actually want sm flat, smooth. Uh, lapping plates if possible. So I am going to try it without the grooves and uh, see uh, see how that goes. Uh, if I run into issues where I, I, I think that's not going to work or it's required, uh, then I'll, I'll I'll put some grooves in there and, and just have to uh, have to live with that. Uh, but um, from from watching his videos and what he what he said, it, it sounds like that uh, making s uh, smooth ones is possible. So uh, we'll give it a shot and see how this goes. Uh, all right. I'm going to put my plate on the top here. Just kind of roll it around a little bit. Oh, that's pretty gritty. Um, all right, so we're just going to do kind of a, a one-third center over center stroke here. Just kind of uh, back and forth. And, and, uh, and just kind of rotate it as we do it. So this grit should break down as we do this. Um, it'll start out really gritty, and as you go on, it'll uh, get smoother and smoother. In fact, I can I can definitely tell a difference already. Um, but, uh, we'll just keep going here and kind of check it in a second.
All right, it's gotten really uh, pretty smooth at this point. I think I've used most of the abrasive. I got some kind of you know, hanging off the side here. Uh, maybe, maybe recycle that back on top, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. It's, uh, take a look at these here. Just going to clean off this swarf from the top. Put that on there, clean it off maybe. Oh, well, definitely, uh, it's definitely doing work. Yeah, so I'm sure you can see that big uh, kind of dull spot right here. That's uh, basically where it's doing. Uh, making the most contact with the top plate. Um, so and that makes sense. I think these plates were, like I said, kind of high in the middle, right? So we'll uh, work this area down first and uh, hopefully that'll slowly work its way out to the edge. And uh, yeah, and uh, we'll kind of see how that goes and then uh, maybe swap plates. Um, yeah, so the idea is, uh, you know, we do the A on B plate uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll flop the B on top of the A, we'll grind that like that for a while. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll swap to C. So we'll grind, uh, like A on C or B on C. All right. So I'm going to clean this up right here and, uh, get set up and then kind of keep going on this and, uh, see if we can, um, kind of get a little more uh, expansion on the, the dull spot here and, and uh, yeah and we'll start rotating plates and, and doing that uh, but uh, yeah I'll check in in a bit and, and see how see how things are looking All right, so it's been a couple of weeks. I want to bring you guys up to speed on what's going on. So here I got two of the plates. Uh, I think this one's A, this one's B. Um, yeah, I'm running into some challenges, I guess, if you want to put it that way. Um, so, you know, I, I mentioned that when you do sanding on these and you have the, the plate face down, you're pushing on sandpaper, you, you tend to put a lot of pressure kind of on the edges. And what you end up doing is kind of wearing a, a, a dome shape. And, uh, yeah, that's exactly what I ended up with. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I was, I was kind of aware of that and I thought, well, okay, maybe I can just sand through that, uh, but, uh, or, you know, use the, the grit and kind of get to it that way. I guess, uh, I guess my expectations of, uh, how fast that process would work was just a little overestimated on my part. It's a slow process. 
<clears throat> I, I, I guess uh, so. You know, we left off. I actually got uh, I got some of this right here. This is a uh, uh, I think it's like a four, mix of like forty six seventy grit uh, carborundum uh, silicon carbide. Uh, you know, I, I, I uh, was using the other stuff, which was 60 grit, uh, but I wanted to save that for my telescope, and I was going through quite a bit of that stuff. So uh, yeah, I picked up, uh, ordered a five-pound bag of this, and uh, yeah. So my expectations uh, using this would be that it would kind of remove quite a bit of material. You know, I wouldn't say extremely rapidly, but uh, certainly not at a snail's pace. But uh, that's uh, kind of what I was running into. Um, I, I, I tried several different things uh, as far as, you know, using lighter fluid, uh, using water. Um, uh, yeah, I, I took it outside. I got a, a bucket so I could wash these off so I could keep the swarf off. Um, tried it with swarf on, swarf off, uh, you know. And, you know, it, it, I kept grinding and grinding, and it, it seemed that I made very little progress. Um and I don't know if it's because I, I I did some reading on the you know the net and I, I think because I don't have these grooves in here it's it's going to be much slower, um, so that just you know may be a, a, a limitation. Um, anyway, the uh, the grit stuff didn't didn't really work out too well as far as removing material. Um, it did make things flat um, over uh, you know the course of doing that it would get these pits in here and it would turn really dull gray and uh you know there, there was you know iron powder coming off what looked like to be iron powder i actually took a magnet to it and you could see all the powder you know kind of just get sucked up by the magnet um <clears throat> but uh yeah i would keep bringing these back to the surface plate uh i you know i set an indicator on like zero on the on the center and just you know did some grinding and i'd come back and check it and see if it had dropped and i, I didn't really notice a difference and i'm like well am i removing material you know what's going on here um and yeah so uh what i ended up doing is uh kind of going back to the the 40 grit sandpaper um uh, what i actually did was uh i took one and uh just put some double-sided tape on one side and, and put some 40 grit sandpaper on there um, and then just kind of set these kind of on top and um, add a, a 50 pound dumbbell that I would kind of rest on here and uh, I would just kind of rotate it um, you know with the weight on here uh, and, and the sandpaper this the 40 grit sandpaper seemed to do a lot better I, I think what was happening with the grit was the grit was just kind of rolling back and forth between the two plates um, it you know, like I said, it would it would remove material, but it wasn't much. It wasn't uh, cutting like I thought it would. So, uh, so this is kind of what I ended up doing. Um, but now I'm I'm running into the the big problem. Um, so over here I've got a, a dial indicator, and uh, just on the center of it, I got it uh, you know kind of zeroed out here. Um, as I as I sweep across the top. You can see most of that's, you know, reasonably flat. Um, I don't see any, you know, big deviations. But the thing is, once I kind of get close out to this edge, you can see that it uh, drops off um, quite a bit. So, and, uh, you know, I'm at like five thousandths out on the edge. Um, yeah, even with sandpaper, trying to remove five thousandths of material is going to take a long time. In fact, I I, I, I don't want it to take that long. Um, so uh, I'm at a crossroads. One, I can kind of keep going down this road and, and you know do it the uh, tried and true uh, you know sandpaper and plates only way. Uh, you know, the goal is I just want to get these kind of reasonably flat to where that I can start kind of lapping them back and forth you know between each other. Um, but, uh, you know, doing that with a, uh, a few thousands or five thousands, um, out here is, is, it's just going to take way too long. Um, so I think it's time to, uh, get crazy and, uh, use an angle grinder and, uh, just, I'm going to have to be really careful, uh, as far as removing material off the top. Um. I don't want to take too much. Uh, I'm probably only going to take, you know, maybe uh, 
four thousandths and then kind of leave a thousandths to maybe work with sanding wise um, but yeah so that's uh kind of the next steps here is uh use the angle grinder on it and kind of rough these out a little bit more kind of knock down you know this entire middle area um, to kind of be uh, more level with the edge so uh, we'll give that a go and uh, yeah we'll see what that gets us all right so I got the plate here on the bench uh, let's just hit it real quick with the uh, angle grinder just maybe kind of in the center here and take out like a little hole uh, and we'll take it back to the surface plate see how much material removed uh, we'll give me a good idea of uh, how much work I'm gonna have to do on this and how much pressure to put and I'll try to keep it as even as possible. Um, it, it's not going to stay perfectly even. Uh, we'll have to come back and you know flat sand it again later on. But uh, yeah, the goal is just to kind of get this entire middle area here kind of down a bit. So here we go. Doesn't look like much. Let's go see. All right, so let's kind of measure here what we took off. Let's see where we're at. Uh, so looking at maybe like half a thousandth, maybe a few tenths there. Okay, yeah. Uh, not that much. So we're going to be a little more aggressive with it. All right, let's go grind some more. All right, so I really gave this angle grinder a honest try, and it's just not cutting the mustard. Uh, the problem for me is to get any type of progress grinding, I really have to push into the material pretty hard. Hard enough that the angle grinder just bogs down and stalls. Uh, I don't think I've got enough power here in this battery-powered tool. Uh, admittedly, this is my first go with an angle grinder, and well, let's just say more moons than I'd care to count. Uh, so I'm going to need to figure something else out, and I think I've got an idea of where I want to go. So the other the other option I wanted to try as far as you know flattening these out, getting you know kind of a rough flatness so I can start uh, lapping them together was a uh, a scraper uh, and just kind of hand scraping the surface of each one. Um, uh, so this is plate B here. I did uh, I did scrape this one against the surface plate, uh, so it is pretty flat. I still have a little bit uh, on the edge out here maybe like a sixteenth of an inch to, to kind of uh, bring the center down to to kind of match the outside but for the most part this is this is flat if I stick this face down on a surface plate and push it back and forth it, it floats pretty well so that's uh, pretty flat I'm pretty happy with that um, plate A uh, I, I did a lot of work on this one I I, I used the uh, the Mike 6 uh, 
tooling plate I had, put some sandpaper on there, and uh, kind of went to town on that. And, and got that reasonably flat. I do have a small little spot in the center here that's like about a thousandth low. Uh, so I still need to, uh, you know, do a lot of work on this. Uh, the big area on this one is, is still the edge. I am still about four thousandths uh, low on the, the perimeter of this. Uh, so that means I pretty much need to remove like a ton of material out of the middle. So I'm probably going to scrape this one as well. Um, the the C plate here does have kind of an area in the middle here where it's about a thousandth low, but for the most part, everything on the outside here is pretty flat all the way to the edge. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm probably I'm probably just gonna scrape this one too. Scraping seems to work really well. Uh, what I like about scraping is I can actually see that it's removing material. Uh, the the chips I take from um, you know pushing this along and, and scraping a chip off you can you can actually see the material with sanding it's like you, you just kind of sand and sand and sand and, and you have no idea if you've made any progress or not I mean it looks a little smoother um, and I think with sanding it, it I'm just not getting enough weight down on the plates to kind of abrade against the sandpaper um, it works great in the beginning when this is kind of a rough surface, but as this gets smoother and smoother, it, it just starts to kind of float against the, the sandpaper and, and really uh, just takes forever to uh, remove material. So scraping is probably, uh, seems to be a lot faster. You know, I, I've, I've, I've put, you know, maybe like four or five hours into this plate right here, scraping it, um, and it, it goes pretty quick. Um, Certainly not a lot quicker than <laughs> uh, the weeks of sanding that I've done. Uh, so the last video when I said I was going to use the uh, the angle grinder, that was a couple of weeks ago. So it's it's been a while. Uh, I've been you know trying different things, grinding on these, uh, using sandpaper, using uh, <laughs> I tried using a belt sander. Uh, that that kind of worked. That I mean removed a little material. Um, but yeah, I think the way forward, I think is, uh, I, I think I'm just going to hand scrape these down. Um, you know, if you didn't have a surface plate, I guess theoretically you could kind of scrape these against, you know, you could scrape these two plates against each other. Uh, and then once you have some sort of reasonable uh, uh, agreement between those two plates, you could swap to these two plates and then, you know, scrape, scrape one of those and then, and then swap to the outer two plates and scrape those against each other and just keep alternating that and you, you would eventually probably get close to pretty flat um, to where you could start you know lapping these together and really dial in the flatness um, so yeah I, I think that's uh, the way forward for me is is just to kind of continue with the the hand scraper here and uh, you know I want to get this done and we'll move on to some other projects um, so, uh, yeah, could you do it sanding it? Sure. Um, you, you probably need to put a lot of weight on there to kind of, you know, sand it down. Uh, you know, with the A plate, I made a lot of mistakes in the beginning with sanding. That's why I've got this kind of like four thousandths of an inch turned down edge on, you know, the outside. Um, uh, the, the, the plate C, I learned a lot by the time I got to the C plate and started sanding it. So this, like I said, this is kind of flat all the way out to the edge, but it, it you know, there's a little spot in the middle here that's a, a little low uh, where the sandpaper hasn't got to yet. Um, th this I may just kind of keep doing this on the the sandpaper, just kind of uh, you know I, I kind of put pressure on the edge here and kind of push down and sand, so kind of works the edge out. Uh, th this plate I think I'm I, I, I'm good with this where it's at. Uh, it's reasonably flat. Like I said, there's a little bit you know maybe like a half thousandth uh, on the uh, the very 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 edge of this but I, I think that'll just come out when I start lapping it uh, but we'll see you know maybe I need to go back and, and hit this a couple more times uh, but uh, yeah I'm gonna start focusing on these two plates here and uh, yeah so I, I don't know uh, when the next update will be for you guys it'll be uh, you know probably uh, <laughs> the next clip but uh, for me it could be a couple weeks uh, but anyway I'll see you then and uh, yeah we'll see where things are at All right, so I got my A plate here. Um, like I said, uh, I like a little low spot in the middle, but the, the major area of concern is kind of the, the edge around it. Um, like I said, it's four or five thousandths low on the outside. I've got like a little rounded over part here that's kind of deep. Uh, I got some scratches uh, around uh, right here. Uh, probably can't see those on camera, but uh, those, uh, those need to come out. 
Uh, so yeah, got some work to do on this, so I'm going to scrape it down. Uh, so I'm going to put some high spot blue on the surface plate here, and we'll mark this up, kind of see where... Uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty much going to be scraping the entire surface, uh, just given the amount of material we got to remove, like 5,000. So bluing it's kind of really, uh, I guess, pointless at this point. But uh, just blew it up and uh, see see what we got as far as high spots, and yeah, start scraping on it. bit of a high spot blue here so I kind of spread some out on the back area here and uh, use that as kind of a soak it up from here and then spread it over here and here's where I actually do the the marking Pretty good coat on the roller here. All right. Uh, it's definitely uh, it's extremely flat, but we got like a donut shape there. So, uh, yep, got some work to do. But uh, like I said, I'm just gonna kind of start scraping the entire thing because uh, we got to remove pretty much all that anyway. So. So I am not an expert at scraping. In fact, I just. Uh, just started doing this so uh, I'm sure what I'm doing is completely wrong uh, but it seems to be working so uh, I'm gonna stick with it for now I'm just scraping on these scratches here. I just want to see uh, how smooth those will come. Yeah. All right, well, we'll start with the blue area and just work our way around, I guess.
Yeah, I'm starting to get some coverage. I'm starting to spread out. So as I get further and further out, I'm going to have to probably tack this down somehow so it doesn't spin. I've gotten away with it so far, but uh, yeah, once you get out to the edge, you, you put too much pressure, it just rotates. So this looks to be going pretty quick, right? So we're, we're like way out here already. But uh, yeah, it, most of the downturn is out here at the edge. So once we get close to this edge out here, it's this is going to slow way down. It's not going to, it'll spread and spread and spread. And then it'll just get slower and slower and slower. And yeah, it's going to take a while.
Okay, so I think we're in a good spot, guys. Um, so I took uh, plates A and B and, and pretty much scraped those all the way out to the edge as far as I could go. Uh, there's like a little bit around it, but uh, I'll, I'll be putting a chamfer on there, so that'll be going away anyway. So I wasn't too worried about it. So uh, I got close enough, called it done. Uh, but I'm really happy with uh, where these turned out. Um, see, they're pretty... Uh, uh, I, I did, after I was done scraping them, go run them across the sandpaper just to kind of smooth them out, get rid of the, the scrape marks. Um, focus, there we go. So, yeah, pretty reflective. And uh, the B plate kind of looks the same. Uh, the C plate, I still have some work to do on that. Let me take a look at this one. You can see in the middle here, there's still this uh, kind of uh, grungy area. So, a little more sanding to do out here still work on that uh, but uh, this does leave me in a, a position where I can start taking the A plate and lapping it against the B plate and then do B on A so I can kind of get that going and uh, uh, yeah I'm just kind of curious to see how that goes and um, see what kind of progress we can make there but yeah super happy uh, these are uh, starting to shape up and uh, yeah it's taken about a month to get to this point so uh, a lot of work and uh, yep looks like it's working out so just keep going all right so next I'll uh, get over get set up at the lapping station and uh, start uh, start getting these going all right so I think I got everything set up uh, ready to go here uh, so I got my B plate uh, right here um, got my A plate over there um, so when Tom Lipton did this, he, uh, he, he had these little ketchup bottles and um, he would take the, the time saver and mix it in there and swirl it around and then pour it on there. Um, I have a really hard time getting it out of here. I don't know, this, the, I'm gonna start off using the fine, which uh, yeah, there's the number on the side. Um, of this time saver lapping compound. This, uh, this comes in a kit. Here's the, the full kit. There's uh, like I said, the green the green uh, green colors here for uh, your hard metals. Uh, the yellow yellow uh, colors are for the, the softer red metals, and copper, bronze, brass, whatever. Um, I'm gonna start with the fine. Um, that might be a little too fine. Uh, we'll see. Certainly not the very fine. I don't think we're ready for that yet. So I'm gonna start with the fine. And uh, if I need to drop down to uh, the medium, I will do that. Um, anyway, like I said, Tom was mixing it in here. I, I do have lighter fluid in here, but um, I just have this little scoop here. It's just a little plastic. It's a the cover to a uh, terminal block, uh, but uh, it's got some raised edges on the side, so I can just kind of scoop this out. I'm gonna scoop a little out, sprinkle it on here, and uh, and then pour a little lighter fluid on there. And uh, yeah, and go to town on it. So I don't really know how much to start off with. So I'm just gonna start with a little bit. I guess that's a little bit. And I'll just set this over here for now. Get my A plate. Put a little juice on here. And uh, maybe smear it around a little bit. And just kind of go back and forth with it. So now because I don't have slots in here, I don't know how well this is going to work, but uh, we'll find out. You know, that's part of uh, part of trying things is uh, learning, right? Try something that doesn't work. Well, you found one way it doesn't work. You do that a thousand times. You find a thousand ways something doesn't work, and you learn quite a bit doing that. Yeah, this doesn't feel super gritty. I don't know. We'll uh, we may need to drop down the size. Hmm. 
So I go back and forth a few times and then just kind of give it a little rotate. Go back and forth a few times, give it a little rotate, back and forth, and just kind of rotate it. Um, and then after a while, we'll just kind of rotate the bottom one. Uh, Tom had like a whole setup, and I, I do have that with the, the white plastic thing that, that holds us in space. Um, holds us, you know, in place, but uh, it seems to be staying just fine on its own, so I'm not going to worry about it. I, I do have those out there. I can go get those if I need them, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So it does, uh, you see some kind of wear marks there. Uh, seems to be doing something. Let's uh, grab a little more here. Let's put a little more on. Spread it around a little bit. So I do have some scratches in these plates, and they may or may not come out in the process of doing this. We'll see. Yeah, that might be a little too much. Here, we'll, we'll work with it. Uh, definitely feels abrasive though this time. I may clamp my tray down because uh, rotating the bottom would be a little easier, I think, with the clamp, the, the tray clamp down. I don't know how flat these turned out. Um, it, it, they were certainly flat when when I scraped them, but after I sanded them, uh, they might have either got even more flatter or less flatter. Um, you know, it sounds kind of silly, I guess, but uh, I'm just not sure which way they went. I'm hoping more flatter. Turning green. Mm. Some paper towels, and uh, I'll clean these off. Take a look at them.
thought the engineer's blue was messy. Ooh. If you can see that, so I can focus there. So I think the shiny points are the hot spots. Uh, I don't know. There you can see it there. Well, we'll keep going. We'll see what uh, what wears and what what doesn't. Well, I don't really know. I think the white spots are actually the low spots. So I think we'll, all this uh, gray area here is where it's been abraded. Uh, but yeah, it looks like it's getting flat. Certainly not as shiny as it was. All right, so we'll just uh, continue on with that for you know a couple more iterations and uh, you know see where we get. Maybe I'll drop down to the, the medium grade and, and do some of that. 
Um, but I think for now I'm going to stick with the fine and, and just kind of push it as far as I can and, and see what kind of progress I'm making. Uh, if I feel that it's not progressing enough, I'll, I'll drop down and, and, and go back a grade. But uh, for now, I'll stick with the 111. Yeah, right, see you guys in a bit. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So I think I'm at a spot where I, I think I can call this project done. Um, so I've got all three three plates here. I have uh, plate C did have a low spot in the middle. I, I ended up having to go back and scrape that down some more and, and kind of re-sanding it to get rid of the scratches. And uh, But I got that out. Um, and then uh, once I had kind of rectified plate C, I, I started the whole process of lapping these together. Uh, starting with the, the, the coarse grit, going to the medium, uh, then going to the fine, and then the extra fine. I, uh, <clears throat> you know, when I started out with the coarse grit, I, I did probably maybe like four rounds of that. And when I say a round, I mean like doing plate A on B, B on A, B on C, C on B, etc. Um, so every iteration of that was a round. So with the, the coarse, I started with about four rounds. Uh, then moved on to the medium, did maybe four to six rounds of that, uh, and then uh, you know the fine and the super, super fine. I did uh, you know maybe like two or three rounds each of those, um, and yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with where things are at. The only problem is I I really don't have a way to measure how flat these are. I mean they they look flat. I mean you can see they're reflective. Um, you can see the reflection hopefully in all the the plates there. Um, a little out of focus, but it's the best I could get for the, uh, get the, the reflection in there. Um, yeah, I don't really have a way to measure how flat these are. Uh, I, I, you know, I'd really like to have a nice eight inch optical flat that I could set on top of here and, um, you know, kind of look at it that way and see how flat it is. But, uh, I, I don't know that they're reflective enough to even use an optical flat at this point. I, I do want to continue grinding on these uh, at some point. I'm going to get 25 micron and then, you know, 12 micron, 5 micron, and kind of keep going down just to just to keep going with it. Um, but for now, I think I'm, I'm happy with where they're at. Uh, I did set a dial indicator on here, uh, like a Noga arm of the, you know, dial indicator and kind of measured across here and, you know, zeroed it out on this one, stuck it on that one and red zero and stuck it on that one and red zero. Uh, the Noga base is a little tilty. Um, I'm going to have to do some work on it, but the best I could tell, yeah, with a thousandths indicator, yeah, they seem flat to at least a thousandths. Um, I'd say probably, um, you know, better than ten thousandths. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy. And, uh, I, I may do like a part two later on, um, and kind of follow up on this, you know, if I uh, once I get the other grits and, and maybe kind of take these a little further but uh, for now I'm calling it done so uh, it's been fun you know it's uh, taken about a month of work to get to this point and uh, you know it's been fun I've learned a lot along the way uh, as far as angle grinding sanding what works what doesn't work um, you know if I were to start over and do this again I would, I would 
you know, the sanding, uh, I, th I think, took a lot longer than it should have, especially on plates A and B. Uh, for plate C, I kind of, you know, like I said, learned a lot since, uh, you know, on the first two, and I, I think I worked that one a lot faster. Um, I don't know, you know, maybe just start off with kind of the, the raw um, surface here and maybe just go with the, you know, the rough garnet and kind of maybe give that more of a chance to try to work. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's still kind of, that's a rough surface for just uh, some garnet on there. Um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe a more powerful angle grinder uh, might have been a, a better option as well. Um, you know, like I said, the, the battery operated one I had, it, you know, it does, does the job, but, uh, you know, just not really enough power, I think, because the more I'd push, you know, down on the angle grinder to kind of grind material away, it, uh, it would just bog down and stop. Yeah, so that, that wasn't getting me anywhere. Uh, it was pretty slow going with the amount of pressure I could put on there. Um, but, uh, Yeah. I think uh, I think it's on to the next project, which is a uh, maybe a telescope mirror. So I'll be starting that soon. All right. So I said I didn't really have a way to measure how flat these are, so I, I came up with a way. Um, basically, I've printed out a uh, 3D printed a spherometer here. Uh, basically, it's just a circle with three feet on the bottom and a hole for the dial indicator to fit through. And what we can do is we can set this on the surface plate and kind of zero it out. You see if I push on it, the, the needle moves. So it's measuring the, the height between these three points and the top of the, the surface plate here. I've got it uh, zeroed out. It does have a little play in it if I wiggle it left and right. Um, but uh, yeah, we take this and we'll stick it on my C plate here. This is the one that had the little low spot in the center. And yeah, it looks like it's coming out right at zero. This is a uh, 0 0.1 millimeter uh, per division dial indicator. Uh, so that, that comes out to about four ten thousandths of an inch per division. A little, little under that. Um, but if I stick it on the other plates, I'll take a look at this one. I think this is A. Um, I'm just going to, yeah, it's right on zero. And stick it on the B plates, and yeah, right on zero. And we'll come back over to surface plate, and we're still at zero. So, uh, yeah, <clears throat> as far as the the limit of this dial indicator, which is 0 0.1 millimeters, uh, they're 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 flat to that. Um, without having a, a more accurate dial indicator, or like I said, an optical flat, I can't really tell if they're any flatter. Uh, but uh, yeah, maybe we'll. Uh, run across something like that later on and I can I can measure these a little more accurately but yeah I'm pretty happy with where things are at and uh, hope you guys enjoyed thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video take care bye